Once upon a time in a land far, far away, people <laughs> needed to build products. And I'm going to use that word products, and, and sometimes I'll, I'll slip and actually use the word projects, but, but I'd like to focus on, uh, on that we're building something larger. And, and even if we're doing an enhancement, we're affecting something that is a product, whether, whether our, our customer is someone outside of the organization or whether or not they're the person three cubes down doesn't much matter. But we had to build products. We had to deal with change. We, but, but, you know, if we just dive in, if we just start, people were confused. Hence, we needed a story. And if we actually go back a few years, all the way back to the genesis of, of the Agile movement, what we'd find is that as part of how Agile was framed right after the manifesto, we were talking about a, a project metaphor or a metaphor that would drive us forward. That, that's fallen out of favor, but the whole concept of storytelling as a means of getting to a vision has not. So I, I wanted to give a quick roadmap. We're going to talk a little bit about history uh, of storytelling, talk about the components an ongoing experiment that I'm doing, something, something that you can do at home, and unlike what you watch when you're, you're looking at a TV show that has a lot of crash test tummies, something that I will suggest that you do try at home. And then some practical tips on facilitating a storytelling session in a business environment so that it gets you value. Storytelling is part and parcel of being a human being. It's funny. Everyone understands stories. We, it's maybe part of our cultural DNA, we might say. Uh, but in reality, if we even go back as far as time, the first thing we know about human beings is, is the cave paintings in the Pyrenees. We had pictures on the wall. People were telling stories whether we interpret that as the food is over here or, or something greater is neither here nor there. The first piece of literature that, that it still exists was the, the story of Gilgamesh. And it's still studied today. And it's, you know, it's a great piece of literature even today. These are part and parcel of who we are. We can take that all the way <coughs> through to today where we have multiple media approaches to stories. Stories are embedded in our video games. They're part, you know, they're part of our movies. We like stories. It communicates. It connects people. But what we have to ask ourselves as IT professionals is what comes first, the vision or the code? And in Agile teams, the answer has to be that the vision comes first, which leads us to a discussion of storytelling as a business tool. Now, I, I, you're probably sitting here going, this is cock. I can't buy into this whole argument. But, but let's face it, stories are a mechanism to generate resonance. And we want teamwork if we want teams of teams to work together if we want to have a partner. We have to get a degree of resonance. And, and that all occurs when we have some degree of shared value, some degree of shared beliefs, some shared worldview, and some shared interest. We have to have that common core that we can then relate to. And, and I talk a lot about with people about the psychology and cognitive biases, but all of those are tempered. So how do you have a team? How, do you, how does a team either create or, or generate boundaries? They have to have shared beliefs. They have to have shared values. Those are, those are really important parts. But once, once we decide that we want to have those, we can use stories as a mechanism to, to create alignment, to generate connection, to provide context all around those shared values, those shared beliefs, those shared worldviews. Um, many times I'll work with teams 
And, and one of the things that we do as a team building exercise, and I'd be happy to pontificate on general team building exercises, but one of the things that we do is that we, we pair up and those pairs generate stories about individuals and what they think you know their their background things that would allow people to understand that there are shared values so we create those stories they create alignment they create the connection they generate context so all of those are are important and you know if if you didn't buy that stories are important in the business environment then i ask you if nothing else, to step over to you know, your coffee pot and listen to the stories. If this were Monday, I think you, if you were in the United States, you'd be hearing stories about the Super Bowl and how that Atlanta was robbed or how, that, how that the, you know, the great New England Patriots had rallied from behind. Those stories, those stories create that connection between people. We use all sorts of other stories. And some of them some of them are more fiction than nonfiction, like status reports. Oh, I said that backwards perhaps. Uh, we provide context. We use the uh, idea of a story to tell people what we're doing, why we're doing it, and and why sometimes why we haven't gotten there. Again, sometimes I think that might be a little bit on the fictitious side. In Agile, you know, everything starts with a vision. And, and that vision, we can, we can actually use sort of the idea of the planning onion, borrow that from my cone for a second, and create sort of a vision or a context onion and that, that the overall context for whatever we're doing, whether we're doing a project, whether we believe in hashtag no projects, and, and that it's just an effort, we can use that context to set the big picture. And then from that, we can then start to extract features, functions, architectures, epics, themes, stories, all the way down to individual tasks and activities. That context, that story, that metaphor you know, provides, provides a common touch point to say, does this belong in my backlog or not? Can we get to a point where, where we can actually, actually trace everything back to what we're supposed to be delivering? We, we talk about providing value. We talk about providing satisfaction to a client. But part of that is to know where we need to go. And just random walking is, is highly inefficient. Stories are, I would suggest, assembled. They're, they're not something that, as with any story, you know, they're, they're hard work. They don't just pop into, into your mind and say, here's where we're going. Um, I studied with a gentleman named Joe Haldeman uh, back in back in the you know late 1900s or something like that right at the University of Iowa and Haldeman who has uh, written and won a couple of nebula awards great science fiction author suggested in one of the classes that no story leaps from dream to page without a lot of work to corral it into something others can relate to and understand. And, and that, that, that idea uh, struck with me that from 1978 all the way to now, uh, it's, it hit me so hard that I actually carry that around with me. Because very frankly, when we're talking about a vision, about where a project goes, we need to do the hard work to get it to a point where it can be it can relate to and be understood by 